um, and also uh, lack of clarity about those two issues. So that's th those are constant uh, ongoing challenges. If you go to the next slide. I just want to mention that uh, if you look at these are targeted groups uh, in 2007 and 2006, uh, and the purple one being 2007, and I bet it's hard for you to see back there, but uh, the largest one at the top, anti-African American hate crime, by far the largest. Um, they are 39% of those targeted for hate crime in LA County, and they are 9% of the general population in the county. Um, gay and lesbians are next, 102 hate crimes occurred, and that's about 15% of the total. Um, Anti-Jewish hate crime makes up the largest amount of religious-based hate crime consistently, about 80%. Then you have anti-Mexican and anti-Latino coming next. If you put those together, they would become the second largest group. Anti-white hate crime follows. Anti-Asian Pacific Islander, anti-Armenian, anti-Christian, anti-transgender, anti-Middle Easterner, anti-Chinese, Catholic. You see the numbers get smaller and smaller. And, uh, but it's incredibly how diverse that every single group practically is targeted for hate crime in our county each year. Go to the next, please. And the rates of violence differ. If you look uh, from the right, that's the highest rate of violence in, against uh, Latinos. Anti-Latino hate crime is 85% violent. Whites, 81% violent. African-Americans, 70%. Middle Eastern, 60%. Armenians, 47%. And Asians, 43% in 2007. Um, all this stuff, by the way, is on our hate crime report that's on our website. Um, and I'll show that at the end, so, uh, and that's, you can download it for free. Go ahead. And this is just to highlight the, um, the year-to-year -year trends in terms of gangs. You can see the bottom red line is the gang, number of gang-involved hate crimes, and the one at the top is the total number of hate crimes. So what you can see is that even though there's been fluctuation with the year-to-year -year totals, there's been kind of a climb in the past few years in ga gang-involved hate crime. And, um, and, and that's very troubling. Um, and this is anti-immigrant hate crime. It's, uh, it's hate crimes that involve anti-immigrant remarks, uh, as well as those targeting certain national origins. And you can see that's the bottom uh, purple line is anti-Latino hate crime. You have the total number of racial ethnic hate crime at the top, and you have national origin hate crime there in the middle, the yellow. And you can see that fluctuating. Actually, I was very surprised um, that our reports weren't greater after the kind of contentious debate that was going on in 2006. But I think what was going on is that, um, well, we know that there's a lot of underreporting uh, uh, in, in immigrant communities. Uh, we also know that there was a huge demonstration, historic, a million people in the streets of Los Angeles on immigrants' rights. So there, a couple things might be happening that there, I think, a lot of uh, there was targeting, but I think there was a lot of underreporting because feeling much less secure about your status. A lot of immigrant targets did not report. Um, and I think that in some cases that might have been, that showing might have also discouraged some would be hate crime perpetrators where they think that they may not be able to, that it's a significant community that's organized, united, and they aren't such easy prey. Um, but I think it also illustrates that in all these debates, the tenor of our debate is critical for the, how well we we handle it and whether it reflects itself in hate crime. The gay marriage, the, the same-sex marriage issue that's coming up, you know, that is something that, that can create a spike in sexual orientation hate crime or not. And it depends the way that the, the debate is carried, the way the media carries it, the way people carry it out in the street every day. If it's used in terms of hatred, if it becomes an opportunity to spew you know, anger and animosity towards uh, gays and lesbians, um, that can very well trigger that increased level of, of violence. But if, on the other hand, if it's a, it's a very civil conversation, respectful, it doesn't have to. And I think that's something that we, we ourselves can have an impact on. Go ahead and... Okay, and then um, just pointing out that we have a higher level, a higher number of charges, race charges and national origin charges in terms of discrimination filed with the uh, National Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, which is the agency that handles discrimination complaints in the employment and housing. Go on. And also, school studies show that um, the Department of Education uh, stats show that students who are gay or perceived to be gay were five times more likely to report being threatened or injured with a weapon. And so that's, you know, when you, when you talk about, you know, the 
uh, people most targeted and most at risk, is, you know, gay and lesbian students and transgender students, tremendously um, um, vulnerable to, to hatred and prejudice. Go ahead. Okay, well, these are public opinion surveys that will tell you that, surprise, the majority of LA County residents believe racial relations are not so good or poor. You know, I do think that's affected by what we see every day in, in, in terms of news coverage. Um, and I don't think it necessarily reflects our daily interactions that we have. Um, but 53% believe racial profiling is widespread in their area of the county. That means government agencies, police departments, et cetera. 54% believe racial relations will improve in five years. And that's a positive sign. People, you know, I think still have a great deal of hope based on their personal experience. There was this very interesting study done by Harvard University's Robert D. Putnam. He had one of the, um, uh, the most comprehensive studies around the country looking at the way communities uh, developed social capital, is what he's calling it. Social capital, maybe you should think of as trust in our relationships. And what he found was actually, um, in some cases, not so surprising, in other cases, very surprising. Um, Increased immigration and diversity reduces trust, social solidarity, and social capital. Um, that people have a tendency to hunker down in diverse neighborhoods. And that even trust of your own group declines when you live in diverse neighborhoods. Okay? He also makes a very clear point. He says, immigrants comprise a disproportionate share of America's Nobel laureates and distinguished scholars and artists. He points out that economic productivity is often higher and crime rates lower in places with greater number of immigrants. And ethnic diversity is increasing and inevitable and in the long run is a valuable asset for advanced countries. Go ahead. He concludes that becoming comfortable with diversity is not easy or quick, but it will be speeded by our collective efforts and in the end well worth the effort. One great achievement of human civilization is our ability to redraw more inclusive lines of social identity. And you know, that's what we are doing every day. We are trying to redraw the line so that people who are on the outs, people who feel excluded, people who feel um, um, disenfranchised can feel like they, are, they matter, that they're part of our communities, that they actually have a say in what goes on. Go to the next one. Okay, this is something that's really um, interesting. If you, uh, I'm gonna, this is a poll that actually was a multilingual poll, the first one of its kind. And it found that um, every single, well, Asians, African Americans, and Latinos, a majority or close majority of each of those groups really believe the negative stereotypes about the other groups. To me, this was just a very clear sign that we have a lot of work to do about educating our own communities um, and trying to battle the discrimination that exists within our own, in our own, uh, in our own groups. But at the same time, it was very hard to see the majority of each group wants to work together for, uh, to better their communities. They believe there's a lot in common. They believe change is possible and they, and they want that to happen. How many people have heard of implicit bias? This is actually the latest research coming out of Harvard. And what they're finding is that, you know how you say that um, everyone says, you know, um, we're all prejudiced, that we all carry this, you know, we all carry stereotypes and et cetera. But you know, people have also said, "I'm not racist, right? I, I'm not. The, I, I don't. I'm not really. A, I'm not sexist. I'm not. Uh, you know, uh, uh, a bigot. 